I mean, like, like I will say, Jenny, people have grilled me on this before. They're like, why don't you just leave and start your own thing? I mean, it'd be great if people subscribe to my own channel. That would be sick. But, um, Morning Brew has been like super supportive of us making this. Um, and again, we haven't been able to not cover something under them. So, and also we came out with the consulting video, which was our first one less than a year ago. So we haven't really been doing this that long. No, it, yeah, um, it, but it's, but there's something there. I mean, it's really good. I, I was so, actually man. shocked that like, when I first watched this, I was legitimately shocked at how high quality it was for a channel that had nothing else. It was fun to make too. We, uh, you know, again, I, I, I handle a lot of the video editing and all the graphics and stuff. So it's fun to spend a lot of time on it. But, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, it was, it was the way that I found out you were watching it was I was at a, uh, uh, a comedy show that I was on in Astoria where there were um, three people in the audience and they were all there because they just wanted to drink at a bar and then mm -hmm. they were pissed that a comedy show was going on and uh, right before I get up some dude's like yo congrats man and I was like what are you talking about he was like Hassan just reacted and I was like excuse me and then he showed me the video and then I was like oh <laughs> shit I had no idea so uh, yeah so shouts funny. out to uh, Astoria um, it was a rough show, but you know, uh, that was, that was when I first found out you were watching these. So it was cool to see that, man. Yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ask him about this. Ask him on the sports betting sports, video. Dude, that was our last one. That was our latest one. Oh, I just, I, I, I haven't seen this yet. I, oh. I have a lot of thoughts on this. Uh, I assume that we have very similar opinions on the matter. I suspect. Check it out. What's uh? You don't mind watching this together? No, no, dude. I, 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 I mean, I love okay. like I've, I've seen this video probably over like fifty times now, but you know, it's still, it's still cool to see it. Okay. In 2018, the Supreme Court overturned a law that banned sports betting in most places in America. A decision that has led to our lives today, which is waking up and being absolutely waterboarded by sports gambling advertising. America's number one sports book, FanDuel, FanDuel Casino, FanDuel free chicken dinners with FanDuel Casino. By gambling at BetMGM Sportsbook. BetMGM. BetMGM. What do you want from your sportsbook? Please help me. Helmet catch. Stop guessing the helmet catch. Is it the Caesar Sportsbook app with Caesar's rewards? Where the more you play, the more stuff you earn, and they have fast payouts because Caesar is the man. Yes. My God, they even got the Tennessee Kardashians. Sports betting has become <laughs> increasingly normalized in America over the last six years, but critics wonder if beneath the legal gambling industry's rise looms a public health crisis of unknown proportions. Portions. So is regulated gambling a healthy future for sports entertainment? Or have we opened a Pandora sports book, putting millions of people at risk of addiction? Let's fucking find out. I've had my own uh, throws with uh, a, a uh, crypto gambling casino. <laughs> wow, uh, that sounds called, healthy. That's <laughs> call, called uh, Steak. Oh, which also. Yeah then ended up getting banned off of this website that we're on right now twitch yeah which then turned around i know the video is echoing because the the noise gate is off shut the fuck up chatters that's why i'm like literally personally uh you know doing my very best here to mute whenever okay yeah. calm down <laughs> um anyway as i was wow. saying uh state got banned off this website yeah. which they then turned around and created their own uh, created their own com competition to Twitch, but not really because they oh they're streaming. Yeah, is that what Drake does? Is that kick, the Drake yes. thing? Oh, that's where Drake's been. Got it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's called Kick, and it's uh, it's a website known for uh, hosting Drake and everyone that's been banned from every other website for <laughs> very valid reasons. Yeah. And uh, it's basically held up. <laughs> it's it's Drake and everybody who got canceled. Yeah, like Aiden Ross nice. and, and all of those guys. Damn, and what an album that would be. Yeah. Well, he might have Aiden Ross uh, glazing up his penis, apparently, <laughs> on the next album, as he said. Is that the next dick dick video we're going to get from Drake? Is him and Aiden Ross? That'd be, that'd be cool. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Did you see the Drake? Did you see his? I did see his penis, yeah, yes. Yeah. I, I did already. I, I, I covered that. It was a, it was important news of the day it was. when we covered it. It was. So, yeah. All right. Let's, let's continue here. <laughs> Today on... 
Online sports betting is legal in 29 states and the freely associated island nation of Washington, D.C., with more states on the way. And with how quickly sports betting has become ubiquitous in American culture, it's easy to forget that gambling can actually kind of be bad for you. We've now been able to show over the last 25, 30 years that when people who gamble, the same parts of the brain are being activated as if I were taking alcohol, tobacco, cocaine, or cannabis. Dr. Tim Fong is the co-director of the UCLA Gambling Studies Program and a clinical professor of psychiatry. It impacts this guy's lame. I immediately, no, lame guy, dude. He doesn't like sports betting. Fuck this guy. Sleep, Tim Fong. It impacts mood, it impacts finances. It impacts He's in the pocket of big happy mental big, health big happiness dude yeah they're out there the, out there man he's in the pocket of fucking of, soy boy tim fong yeah not pushing goes to ucla too yeah. not surprising yeah libtard <laughs> all right relationship. Classic. yeah and when you have a product that's being given out and regulated by the government it's got to be regulated and it's got to be understood. In 2013, the American Psychological Association officially classified gambling as an addiction. Meanwhile, since its 2018 legalization, sports betting has generated a gangbusters amount of economic activity in the U.S. $220 billion in bets were placed in just the first five years it was legal. There are now over 16 million average monthly users of the most popular sports betting apps. And next year, online sports betting revenue is expected to approach $12 billion. But to understand this growth trajectory, we got to talk about something called Daily Fantasy Sports. Daily Fantasy is an online version of Fantasy Sports, and according to my wife, a terrible reason to have my phone out during our kids' baptism. Fantasy is when you pick a bunch of real players, assemble a fake team out of them, and keep track of their stats. But around 2010, a new turbocharged version of Fantasy came onto the scene, where you could set new lineups as often as every day, play in apps on your phone, and crucially, put money down on the results. So you had two competitors that really arose uh, to the top of the market here, DraftKings and FanDuel. Kenneth Vogel is a New York Times investigative reporter who was part of a team that wrote a series of major stories about the betting industry's rise in America. And they made a business out of fantasy sports and allowed players also uh, lame. to wager, not wager, but put the money on the- The problem is if like sports bet, like people who sports bet are so fun and funny. Yeah. And so, you know, that is they're true. awesome, dude. Like, like a lot of the comments that we saw on like, like we would watch TikToks of people who are like, you know, uh, gambling, like gamblers help TikToks. Like, here's how you can stop gambling. And people are like, sounds like, uh, sounds like you suck a gambling pussy. And you're like, yeah. that's hilarious, man. Yeah, no. It's like, I like want to hang out with that guy. Skill issue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 90, yeah. 99% of gamblers uh, uh, always always stop right before they win it's big. right before it's right before they actually crazy quote I, I don't think we had in this episode but tim fong was talking about he said gambling is one of the only addictions where you think doing more of it is going to cure you of ever doing it he's like yeah. nobody sniffs cocaine and they're like i'm never gonna want to do coke after this bump you yeah. know but gambling's the one where you're like if i if i hit this one you know, I don't have to do it ever again. I don't ever have to do it again because it'll yeah. pay off all my problems. Yeah. Um, well, it's I'm I, I don't know if he touches on this, but like I remember doing a, a little bit of research uh, myself while we were uh, while I was covering like the dangers of gambling. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I always found very interesting is that it's not about the win at all. And it's not even about the loss. The dopamine hit, according to uh, according to researchers, actually comes from the anticipation. Yeah. Like, so it has nothing to do with winning or losing. Like, what is addictive is chasing the that dopamine hit over and over and over again. The, the, the not knowing what the outcome is going to be right before you make the bet. Mm -hmm. That is what is so addictive about gambling. Perfect transition onto the stat that I was going to say before that, which was the they measured the dopamine that you get from losing and the dopamine that you get from winning, and it's the same amount yeah. in a gambling addict's mind. Because there's no, it's just the act of gambling yeah. that, that gets people hooked. It's not like the winning. Yeah, it's, you know? the, it's the anticipation, they say, that makes it so uh, addictive. Mm -hmm. It's that, Or that's what they're looking for, the uncertainty. Yep. Yeah. Perform to their teams. They would push back against the use of the term wager there. Even though gambling on sports was still broadly illegal, Congress had previously determined that fantasy sports were actually a game of skill, not luck, meaning that putting money on the results wasn't gambling. Which reminds Technically, sports gambling is more skill based. Like, obviously, it's still gambling, 
But that's the reason why, like, uh, I don't know if you know this, but sports books will literally ban you or uh, they do this thing called limiting. Like there's a way to leverage your bets in sports betting, apparently, where you can actually you can actually end up uh, cleaning. You can actually basically end up cleaning the fucking coffers. And therefore, uh, as far as I understand, if you win too much, they will limit your daily bets dramatically so that you have no shot of like ever uh, call arbitrage. Yeah, arbitrage betting. You can do that, but then also on top of that, uh, yeah, it's basically like, you know, if you can count cards, you can't mm. play blackjack in a yeah. casino, and if you're too good at sports betting, then, uh, yeah, you'll you'll have um, match betting, and you get your account banned, and no access to deals has happened. It, like, hmm. every, every single establishment, if you're too good at gambling, they will fucking stop you. Yeah. And... Uh, and Weirdly enough, that's legal. I don't know. There's uh we don't get to talk about this much in the episode. We put like the headline on the screen at one point, but there's this guy, Jim Chanos, Chanos, uh, who basically uh super rich dude who tried to short the gambling industry. Um, but then recently you know, there's some Financial Times article about it. Recently he like turned around his bet because statistically the gamblers in the US were losing so much money. Like, more than he expected, he was like, oh, no, this industry's going to fucking kill it. Because he thought, like, oh, no, the sports gambling industry, it's going to get regulated. It's never going to. And then people ended up making so much money off of it because people were losing bets and they were just becoming addicted so fast that he was like, no, nah, it's yeah. going to do fine. It also, I mean, it like, it's a it's an amplifier where, like, you're not going to be, it, it's such a great win-win you're not going to be as enthusiastic about some fucking random, like you're not going to watch the bills if you're not a fan. Yeah. But if you're gambling, all of a sudden you're invested. Oh, you dude. actually have a level of investment, which translates to higher ratings, which translates to more revenue that you can generate for every single game watched. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's, it's a real, it's a perfect storm. Yeah. Oh, if you're, if you're hooked, man, you're watching like teenage Thai boxing matches and yeah. you're betting on like, yeah, exactly. you're streaming those. We talked to a, uh, uh, this, this one, uh, he, we, we didn't get him on the episode, but he was a gambling addict. And I asked him, I was like, so what's the lowest point that your addiction took you to? And he said, at one point he was in college and he created fake hinge profiles of women and he would like, like start messaging dudes and then gradually be like, by the way, here's my Venmo. Like, if you if we if we really want this going, like, you know, maybe you buy my plane ticket to come see you. And then he would get money from them and then he would just use that for bets. And he was like, Yeah, I was I was probably simultaneously seven women at one point. That's insane. How nuts is that? <laughs> it's like, That's really fucking insane. Uh, reminds oh, me man. a lot of an argument my high school friend Chaz used to make about the pullout method. The gray area in which these fantasy companies operated was pretty controversial. Even at the time, a lot of state attorney generals and even some sportsbook CEOs publicly said that they considered daily fantasy to be gambling. But the industry saw it differently. So you don't view what you do here at... For the record, it absolutely is gambling. I just, I know that it could be, it could come across as confusing what I was saying about like, there is a skill component to sports betting. But of course, they neutralize that if mm -hmm. you if you are too good at it. Something I did not know and was shocked by, by oh, the yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't they don't immediately ban you. As far as I understand, um, they will lower the amount that you can. They gradually or instantly lower the amount that you can uh, gamble with until it's uh, you're you're basically rendered useless. Yeah, if you're not a fucking sigma. Yeah, you got to do it right. You can't win too much. <laughs> Uh, FanDuel is gambling. No, no, that's, that's a word that isn't used very much around here, I take nope. it. Still, FanDuel and DraftKings clearly understood that they were operating in murky waters and made a huge lobbying push to defend themselves. And they were pretty successful. By 2017, 19 states had passed laws explicitly legalizing daily fantasy sports. But this effort wasn't just about creating a legal framework for daily fantasy. The industry's big kahuna was still out there, swimming around in the deep blue sea, just waiting to 
be caught. I'm talking about full-on sports betting. Breaking news to Supreme Court this morning, striking down the federal ban on sports betting. Now it leaves it up to the states. When that happened, the industry was ready to get lobbying, thanks to their powerful network of relationships in state capitals that they built during their daily fantasy push. There was a lot of like whining and dining. That was, that was my colleague, Eric Lipton, and a photographer who went out to um, uh, it's just a crazy moment, dude. This is literally a uh, politician in Kansas getting lobbied and they go to like a uh, cigars and cars uh, event where it's just this dude with this, with this fucking torpedo cigar in his mouth and he's just pounding around with the lobbyists. It's like the most cartoonish like example of lobbying ever. It's so seems, funny to me. Seems you're a little jealous that he's getting his money up and you're over here getting your funny up. That's true. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah. That's fa bars. Uh, Kansas. This is a party that uh, was sponsored <laughs> by the industry, by lobbyists who were representing the legislative cigar caucus. Yeah, that's the what cigar they... caucus, dude. That's the awesome. Industry. The lawmakers were smoking cigars and drinking expensive scotch that was provided by the lobbyists and sort of schmoozing with them as the debate was unfolding a few blocks away in yep. the capital. The industry's main arguments for legal sports betting, both then and now, are to fight black market gambling <laughs> and generate tax revenue. There's this big illegal market and there's no consumer protections, no tax revenue being generated. Why don't we just bring that in house? A lot of states are understanding that it's really just common sense legislation to allow mobile sports betting. Uh, it raises tax revenues and it puts an illegal market out of business. And look, I know it's easy to go around bad these this is a pretty solid argument, by the way. I do agree. Like, that is the most solid argument you can make for it. The problem is you need to heavily regulate it, and I feel like they don't do that at all. No. Like, I mean, they don't they don't even heavily regulate the the places where you can do it. And there's I mean, there's two different ways of doing it. Obviously, you could just like ban it entirely and then prosecute those who violate it which they don't do, no. and instead they have basically been like, all right, well, let's create an avenue for tax revenue here. Well, CEOs. and they legalize it, and yeah. then they go, they go, well, we're going to legalize it, and then we'll regulate it based off of what happens after. But then it moves at such a quick pace after it's legalized, they're catching up to regulating it right now, which is you know kind of what we get into later. Yeah. Especially when they got this mid as hell zoom background. What is this a map of the lands you plan to conquer? Why, why do you have a bla black and white photo of the industrial revolution behind you? Come on, Matt. It could be worse. You've got some work to do, buddy. But my point, which I'm making very clearly and without getting sidetracked, my point is that the gambling black market is a problem and regulating it would generate tax revenue. One of our biggest concerns, we have so much of it, the unregulated sports betting market, right? So these are the websites uh, that are based in who knows where. They take all electronic you know, financing, so they're, they're not subjected to the uh, regulations of the state. But trying to shut them down is impossible because you don't even know where they exist. Now, it's impossible to know the exact size of the black market at this time, but some estimates had Americans illegally betting as much as $150 billion per year. But the industry's second point was that if states did vote to legalize, it would instantly create tax revenue. One of the things that the industry, sports betting industry, had going for it, you know, after 2018 was, uh, it, you know, uh, it's um, sort of a perverse way to think about it, but it was the pandemic. I mean, the pandemic put a real dent in state budgets. So the black market, the promise of tax revenue, state budgets absolutely decimated by the pandemic. It was the perfect storm for sports betting companies to capitalize on and capitalize they have. There's a huge investor appetite around it. The companies are turning over massive amounts of money. Everyone's very excited. Oliver Barnes is a reporter for the Financial Times who's been covering the gambling industry both in the US and the UK. Lawmakers are also quite excited, right? Because you're sitting in a state that's yet to. Do you know the number one place, by the way, for gambling and how devastating it is, apparently, the number one country? Oh, yeah. Do you want me to kind of guess? You say it. Australia? Yeah. Yeah. My buddies are, uh, they did a. <laughs> A, a collaborative piece with the friendly Jordies on it and then the friendly Jordies got like their fucking house firebombed and shit there's like direct what? mob ties oh oh yeah in australia if you're a youtuber that's like covering the the, the aussie phenomenon. mob damn australian mobs they, gotta be crazy <laughs> it's so funny you know what they call them what boy keys the boy keys which is such a funny thing because it's like you can't you can't be like a serious thing. No. <laughs> when you when it's when the bikies. It's the fucking bikies, man. Fucking bikies. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty funny, in my opinion. I I find it very funny because it's like it's the least threatening, scary group. Yeah. 
the Bly case. Yeah. They, they, he got firebombed by him? His house got firebombed. We don't know who, but uh, there was... he. Friendly Jordy's exposed a uh, tie between the um, between uh, Australian politicians and like mobs, mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe, for their for their uh, uh, connection to one another, and then um, and like gambling legislation and mm -hmm. lack thereof. Mm -hmm. There was no direct evidence, but it happened right after he did an expose on money laundering. <laughs> yeah. There's no direct evidence. Yeah. It was fucking insane. But there's no direct evidence, so we don't know what happened. Yeah. And I think that, yeah, he was also threatened directly and forced to take down his video. And I think someone was arrested who did have... Jesus. Yeah, see? Alamedean crime family associate <laughs> charged over friendly Geordie's firebombing. <laughs> An associate of the Alamedean crime family has been charged over last year's firebombing of the Bondi house of political commentator wow. and YouTube satirist Jordan Shanks, Jordan known Shanks. online as friendly, friendly Geordies. Geordies. Kind of looks like Ozzy U, actually. Yeah. Like, look. Let's see. Wait, I'm going to show. He, he looks like. Let's see what the chat says. No disrespect to you, but he kind of looks like you if you went through the, the, the Chad filter. <laughs> he does he does look like sigma me yeah look at that jawline yeah damn he could i feel like he could like unhinge his jaw and swallow me like a python yeah you know? he's 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 hot mate <laughs> look at him wow yeah they literally hit the wrong horse first police fixated persons unit harass him and his mates to total corruption yeah wow i, had I no think he was a male model at some point yeah yeah Damn, um, he got, oh yeah, look at that. There's a photo. He, he's not getting, very funny though. He's not like funny at all. He's oh, very just straight. He's very serious. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's on hiatus. My other my other uh buddies that are that are friends with him, they're they're very funny. They went to uh you'd like them. Have you ever heard of uh Boy Boy? No, who's that? Uh, uh there's two channels. One is I did a thing, which does like tech uh, engineering, like stupid engineering stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is Boy Boy. They went to uh North Korea to get a haircut. Oh wait, I saw the yeah. I saw the thumbnail for this, but I haven't I hadn't seen the video. Yeah, they they like traveled to North Korea to get a haircut to dispel uh like uh mainstream narratives about like the silliness of like North Korea where everyone has to get a fucking Kim Jong un haircut. Did they pull it off? They do? Yeah, they did, yeah. Wow. It was sick. I gotta see this. Oh, there it is. North Korea, the most dangerous country. Well, yeah, they they also. It was pretty eye opening. No, it was stupid. Pretty eye opening. Love them. Um. Oh yeah, this is from North Korea. What is this? You have a this poster. They what? they got me. They, that literally. They got you this. Yeah, Otto Wormbier could never. <laughs> you haven't checked this for cameras at all. No, they're my. Uh, this is this is watching us right now. I don't think North Korea has. What does like, it say? Secret camera tech. I forget. I think this it might be like insane. a Christmas. Is it an Easter poster or some shit? Like Does that? anybody know what this but says? I forgot. I remember doing the translate shit back in the day. But yeah, this is um, this is literally from North Korea. Unbelievable. Yeah. Whoa. That's crazy. How long have you had this for? Um, I've had this for a year. How many times have you been firebombed? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I live in America. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we, oh, we don't do that here. We don't do that here ever. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. The setup is so Oh, it says Happy New Year. It says to run the top oh. of the hour ad break. Yeah, I'm going to run it right now. Let's go. Um, Hold on. I do, uh, do an ad break right here? This, yeah, but it doesn't is matter. My, this is my first Twitch stream ever. I've, yeah. never, I've never streamed. This is the first time. This is a little bit more chaotic than I would say the average Twitch stream is, yeah. but it's more like a <laughs> podcast setting too yeah. in some way, so it's a more comfortable format. Yeah. That you might be more familiar with, hmm. um, but uh, do you yeah, do, no, they're do you do an ad read right now or what? no, no, no? Oh. I just run a three minute ad break. Most people don't even see it because they're subscribed. Oh, oh, yeah. okay, got it. I didn't know if we if we were about to do like a joint dude wipes ad read or something like that. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, that was gonna be roped into. No, it. no, no. I wouldn't do that to you. Don't worry. <laughs> that'd be awkward. That'd be, that'd be so awful. <laughs> All right, you can fuck off now, Dan. Thanks. Yeah, it just says Happy New Year. Look at that. Wow, somebody did that fast. Yeah, there's, bro, there's 22,000, 23,000 yeah. people in here. Wow. Um, yeah, a Dude Wipes ad, incredible. You know about Dude Wipes? Yeah, I mean, I, I was I just mean, talking about it earlier how today. How can you not? 
I've, I was just, I've listened to a podcast before. Yeah, I, I was just talking about dude wipes earlier about how like my my um, water heater is busted currently, so yeah. I had to use a dude wipe to shower myself with. It was like a shower <laughs> wipe. It worked. Did you feel was, clean after or no? It was also from a. It was like from a. <laughs> this fucking, is the worst ad read ever. <laughs> well, I didn't do an ad for them. Yeah. They just send it to me. So like brands will send shit to me when they want me to do ads for them. Right. And then I just usually don't end up working with them anyway. Uh-huh. So I just had it from like years ago. Yeah. Um, this is me anyway. actually just sneaking sponsored Dude Wipes content yeah. into the stream. You're like, you're like Dude Wipes number I'm one. I'm like, but Dude Wipes are so clean and comfortable. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So that's what happened to yeah. friendly Jordies. That's nuts. For, you know, so watch out. If, you're ever, if you're ever traveling in Australia, don't talk about gambling. Yeah, just go gamble. They yeah. love it there. They do love gambling. The pokies. The most, the most uh, addictive. I mean, uh, the most suicidal uh, addiction, as far as I yes. understand, as well. Yeah, I read that stat as well. Yeah. Uh, right. um, legalize sports betting. You have a whole load of tax revenues you can just switch on there overnight. But in reality, many states who have voted to legalize have seen less tax revenue than expected. The, the industry, the sports betting companies, and the gambling trade groups push for lower tax rates. While lobbying for legalization in states like Kansas, the industry argued that the best way for states to maximize their tax revenue would actually be to tax betting companies less because it would create an easier market for the companies to operate in. <laughs> okay, huh. whatever you say, Mr. Businessman. <laughs> All right. But in 14 jurisdictions that legalized and followed the industry's tax advice, revenues in 2022 were nearly $150 million less than predicted. And in addition to negotiating lower tax rates, the industry also convinced many states to classify huge chunks of their advertising spend as tax write-offs. When we talk about deductions for advertising and marketing, what we're really talking about is the promotional bets. And so what that is, is you see an ad and it says, get your first hundred dollars of like free bets or like we'll match your first hundred dollars or what have you. And this is like an incentive that the gambling companies are using to bring in new customers. And what they- Oh, another fun fact is, um I don't know if you mentioned it in the video as well, but uh, the way that they get away with this, other than obviously it's a tax write-off uh, for marketing, the reason why you might be shocked, like why are they giving so much free money away, is because gambling companies do not generate revenue off of like the casual gambler that goes in and like fucking pulls the slot machine one time. Yeah, and then dips. They make money off of the whales. They make money o- almost entirely off of lifelong degenerate gamblers who are hooked on the addiction that's it that's how they do it well it's why when you see a gambling ad it goes hey your first five bets are free and then we give you more money and we we do get into this on a um on a, on a promotional ad that's DraftKings is being sued for in los An- in uh in massachusetts but it's all just about getting people hooked that's all they care about you know it's like it's like why robin hood was gamified you know, they were going to make money off of people that became addicted to trading stocks. It's the same thing that, you know, social media companies use to get you addicted to like Instagram or like Twitter or whatever the hell. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's, it's really fucked up because they're trying to cast as wide a net as possible to find like one. If one out of like the 10,000, well, not one, but like if one out of the every 100 person becomes a whale for them, becomes like a lifelong degenerate gambling addict who will most likely suffer uh then it's worth it it's worth the yeah. money like they've done the research behind the scenes to figure out exactly how many hits it takes to to trigger to oh, yeah. find the one guy who's going to be a fucking gambling addict and it's going to be dudes between the ages of 18 and 25 that is their target audience we talk later about how they have like partnerships with college campuses but that's who they're looking for they want yeah. they want dudes whose brains aren't fully developed yet who are just starting to get money and they're watching sports and they're surrounded by a bunch of friends who want you know who want to just like fucking parlay at the bar you know yeah i think that i i think that that's why like <laughs> the most devastating impact of barstool has been this specifically i feel like because it goes back to what you were talking about before it's like they're so fun oh they're they're hilarious like they're so funny they're a great hang dude yeah exactly you know who's so, not a good hang is fucking me <laughs> yeah <laughs> fucking people who are annoying about like <laughs> taking your fun you know away. actually fellas this is pretty bad for you yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> no literally yeah, no, i, I, I know suck. that personally like i've 
I have uh, many enemies now in that field. Yeah. Especially on the crypto side, which is shitty because, like, I also personally love gambling. Like, I'm a fucking... Mm. Uh, what is it? Like, I have, like, a... Where is it? Hold on. Let me find this real quick. Yeah, I have, like, a fucking... No, oh, this is not the right one. Where's my card? I have, like, a bunch of different cards like, like i got go to vegas like i have yeah, a host yeah, yeah. oh you got it damn yeah yeah no i i have a M, i'm a mgm gold card what at this hell? point <laughs> and it's like two steps oh my below God. like the maximum card that you can get and it, it and basically like yeah i have my player's card and everything and the the thing is like i enjoy it i'm able to like the way i the way i do it is like if i get like this level of comp i'm gonna spend it on gambling sure does that make sense? Yeah. So that's the only that's the that's the limitation that I have regardless. Setting I, sound load on yourself. Yeah, sure. exactly. So But dude, if it's on your phone, there's none of that. Exactly. There's none of that. And man. you don't get any of the fucking benefits. Like the entire Vegas industry is propped up to like hook you in and make it entertaining mm -hmm. uh and not just purely for the uh, not just purely for the the uh, the dopamine hit, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's why it's additionally hilarious because like I've talked to I guess like I've talked to Vegas people mm. about this particular thing because like it was a big deal when it was like happening the whole like banning crypto gambling off of um, off of Twitch mm -hmm. and obviously they kind of loved it because they see it as like massive competition. Mm -hmm. So they're like yeah, all in favor of, of eliminating the competition. So they, so I guess I'm I'm not as hated in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, I I think all of this is just horrible. Well, and it's the the goal which we kind of mentioned towards the end of this though. You know, it's not over. Sports gambling was a step in the process, but the next one is eye gaming that they want. I mean, then that's fully legalized gambling on your phone. Some states have it, but not as many as online sports betting. But once iGaming is legal on phones, you don't need to go to a you don't need to go to a casino anymore. The, the you live in a casino. If it's on your phone, you essentially live in a casino. You can access it whenever. And if it's the most addictive thing that you have on your phone, you're never gonna leave. Yeah. You know? It's really they did up. was they convinced lawmakers in both Don't support the unethical gambling and betting industry even if you can control yourself. What do you mean? Like, dude, it's the same as alcohol. Like alcohol is is awful. Yeah. Okay. But oh, if we invented alcohol today, dude, you would not see as many ads for it. If it just came out today and it was first introduced, it would not have the same, uh, you know, prevalence in advertising as it has now. Yeah, one hundred percent. And but it's it's fun. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna fucking fun as hell. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna sit around and be like, yeah, this shit. Like we should. I, I'm not in favor of like complete prohibition. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Again, if there's if there's something that we keep going back to, it's just like, but also like uh, my friends who gamble are, are a lot fun, more fun than I am. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> it's just it's a anything in moderation, you know, but that's but also, again, that's what these, these companies don't make a profit off of moderation. That's the whole business model. Like you said, they need whales to survive as a company and to continue growing. So moderation is not their goal. It's not what they're working towards. And that's kind of, and we don't really say in the video, like gambling is, is awful for you and you should never do it. It's more so just like, look at what people are trying to, are trying to build here, you know, which not a lot of people are always aware of. Yeah. Most states to allow them to deduct the cost of these promotional bets. No, I think like one of the major things I we keep pausing the video. I'm sorry. You're I think good. one of the major things is like limiting how easily you can access it. Mm -hmm. Like you can't like even with alcohol, it's devastating. It's a devastating addiction, right? I mean, I, I, I famously, as I've talked about before on this broadcast, was arrested for a DUI, never prosecuted. I'm still evading the law. Okay. Um, but like I, I had issues with hmm. that 100% mm -hmm. back in the day. And, and even then there is like, there's still a, a, uh, a degree of separation from like seeing it and immediately being able to get alcohol. Mm -hmm. Right. Whereas like with mobile gambling, you have no restrictions and you can do it as a child basically. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, you can, you right can just do it. And many children do do it, uh, specifically on crypto gambling casinos online. Yeah. 2022 alone, the industry gave out almost $1 billion in these promo bets, costing states more than $120 million in potential taxes. States are losing money on promotional bets. I'm losing money on promotional bets. You and I aren't so different after all, Kansas. Maybe this could work out between us. And though tax revenue generated by the industry post-legalization has been underwhelming, you might say the opposite about its approach to marketing. Spreads to cover, overs to hit, and chances to live bet from the first sound to the final whistle. Download BetMGM. You know what to do. The industry spent about $300 million on TV ads in 2023 and an estimated $1.8 billion in local markets. This marketing push even made it to college campuses. One deal between Michigan State and Caesars Sportsbook let Caesars Caesarize part of its campus. Another between Colorado Boulder and PointsBet gave the school $30 every time one of their students signed up for the app and placed a bet. Granted, there's a lot of backlash to these deals. The lead gambling industry trade group now prohibits marketing on college campuses. And since then, Michigan State, Colorado, and other schools have canceled their partnerships. But what's so bad about these ads anyway? Getting Caesar eyes sounds fun. The public health issue is that this is an addictive product. Oh, I get it. Too fun. Richard Daynard is the lawyer who designed the litigation strategy against the tobacco industry, resulting in big tobacco coughing up over $200 billion and changing the way they market cigarettes. We lied and told him we were 60 minutes, and he agreed to tell us about his next target, the sports betting industry. There's the denial of, you know, of dangers, presenting this thing as simply a harmless way to have fun. March 10th of last year, of 2023, that was the day that uh, sports betting was unleashed in Massachusetts. There was just massive marketing. You know, there'd be trash containers, it'd be on the side of uh, buses, uh, as well as on uh, you know, television, just about anything you turned on would have an ad for, you know, one of the companies. Unfortunately, it's been a while since I've turned anything on, Professor. <laughs> Daynard's Public Health Advocacy Institute recently backed a lawsuit in Massachusetts against DraftKings, and its focus is on one of those fun tax write-off promotional ads. According to the lawsuit, DraftKings knowingly and unfairly designed a $1,000 sign-up bonus. The the, 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 you, you'll, no, you'll see the, the, this is the kind of promotional bet or ad that we were talking about earlier which is how they get people hooked uh with false advertising so i just wanted to call that out before we get to this point thousand dollars comes in the form of additional bets which customers could only get if they first deposited five thousand dollars risk twenty five thousand dollars within 90 days and bet on events with worse odds than three to one which you know what this reminds me of it's like like they 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 hit it from the angle of like nefarious marketing. And it's always funny when like the worst thing you can do in business is not to like, uh, you know, put out a faulty product that ends up killing people, but is instead uh, lying to investors. So like Theranos, for example, comes to mind where, um, you know, it's, it's not like, it's not engaging in like fraudulent business practices in the medical field, but instead it's actually lying to shareholders mm -hmm. that ends up getting you in actual legal trouble. And this almost feels like a version of that where they're not regulating any of the, the stuff that they should be. And this makes it seem like there's at least some level of regulation. See, we're touching on not all of the advertising, but at least the advertising that is hiding the, mm -hmm. the uh, yeah. additional qualifiers. Yeah. This is really all you could sue them on is yeah. false advertising, but the rest of it, if it's just Kevin Hart telling you to download DraftKings, can't really sue him for that. You yeah. Know? And it's it's wild because like I, I can't even think of like any like I, I really don't know uh if we have any serious regulation restricting like the type of advertising you can do uh on on this uh, field or any of the vices in general, really, since like I guess like the 90s or 2000s. I can't really think of anything like that. There's, uh, it's kind of state by state right now. I know we talk about it in a bit, but like Maine, for example, you can't have entertainers do ads. So I think maybe if there's like, you know, uh, like Jamie Foxx in, an, in a BetMGM ad, you can't air that in Maine or something. Yeah. 
but also like what's that gonna do you know well you protect so, the people of maine a little bit marginally yeah, yeah. so right now I, but but again it's state by state right so the regulation is catching up to legalization like years following so yeah, it's inevitably when enough congress persons like children kill themselves you'll have like at least passionate enough yeah. people that should are we elected, do something here it, should it, we passionate enough elected representatives that will turn around and make this their like pet project mm -hmm. And, like, you will get some level of, like, restrictions, or at least Jamie Foxx will have to, at the end of the advertisement, be like, and if you gamble, it's the most suicidal addiction. <laughs> Gambling is really bad. Yeah, it's super fast, though. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> similar to, uh, depending on the severity, similar to, like, you know, all the warning signs they put on fucking cigarettes and yeah. shit like that. Doesn't sound like I'm going to get $1,000. The idea is for you to continue to bet, which is the way you develop and heighten an addiction, which is you keep at it, you keep doing it. We hope to you know, encourage you know, other litigation. This is hardly the only deceptive ad running in the United States. And there is some backlash building. We don't see cannabis ads on TV, do we? We don't see a lot of tobacco ads on TV anymore. And all that... Which sucks. Because smoking is so cool. Again, Tim Fong, pussy. Yeah, that's I called it. him that to his face in the interview. We had to cut it out. I'm, I'm glad that you're <laughs> you're doing you're doing the right thing by being yeah. a bold truth teller. Yeah. It has an impact on what people think and feel about that product, right? When you look at the gambling ads right now, they're all 120% positive. Regulators in Ohio doled out almost a million dollars in fines last year to betting companies for advertising that customers could make free bets. Massachusetts and other states have moved to legally ban advertising on college campuses. And all the way up there in Maine, lawmakers propose banning cartoon characters, celebrities, athletes, and entertainers from being able to appear in ads. Which might sound extreme to us here in America, but is actually very similar to the way that lots of other countries regulate gambling advertising. In the UK, there's like a whistle to whistle ban on football matches you can't advertise like during a football match in terms of like tv commercials because of the advertising environment where you're bombarded with ads it's very difficult to kind of escape that habit of like recurrently gambling the uk has also banned gambling logos on the front of premier league jerseys and other regulators want to move even further in australia gambling ads are banned during games between 5 a.m and 8 30 p.m in belgium and the netherlands have fully banned gambling advertising on tv radio newspapers and in public spaces Spaces. And these regulations are all reaction to the way that gambling has proliferated in these countries post-legalization. The UK Gambling Commission earlier this year said that as many as 2.5% of their adult population could be problem gambling. Meanwhile, in Australia, citizens lose more gambling per capita than in any other country. And some worry that if the- Fucking skill issue, dog. There it is. There it is. If your country is known uh, for, for taking the biggest collective L against fucking a bird, <laughs> okay, then, you know, maybe you shouldn't take on gambling like that. <laughs> Guy in the video kind of looks like the dude beside us on. Oh, my God, I never noticed that. What? You do kind of look like him. What, what's Who's the guy? He's more handsome, I think. But. Who's the guy beside? Oh, 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 oh okay. Well, no, I mean, he's uh, he's a uh, he's an investigator and I'm re I'm his PR people. Yeah, he only hires people that look like him. Yeah, we're ex -PCG. The US isn't careful we might not learn from these more mature markets the real issue is are we are escalating up to a tipping point where we could develop a gambling crisis like a gambling epidemic like we had with opioids i don't think we're there yet and i think having these conversations now should i think prevent and mitigate a lot of those things like that well it's all in a day's work dr fong happy to solve a public health crisis whenever sir so outside of ad regulations what are some options that we have to create a safer legalized sports betting market one obvious tool is self-exclusion which just means giving people the option to tell these sports betting companies hey don't let me use these apps ever again. But U.S. self-exclusion technology lags behind the U.K.'s. So I go to FanDuel and I say, I want to stop gambling, self-exclude me from FanDuel, which you can do in the U.S. But you then also have to go and self-exclude yourself from all the other apps. In some states, you can go to the state regulator and say, please self-exclude me from all of them. But in some states, that's an online process where you fill in a form. In some states, you literally have to write them a letter. And you compare that to the U.K., where I go and ban myself from one betting app, 
out, they'll ban me from all of them. When you look at the, the US, the, the actual safety mechanisms in place, there's just considerably less of them. Other areas where the US can make improvements include eliminating betting with credit cards, which 20 states allow, taking a closer look at live betting during games, where bettors can wager on things like how fast the next pitch will be, bets where the odds are more advantageous for the sports books than normal, and increasing the amount of public funding towards problem gambling resources. In fact, nine states provided zero funding for problem gambling services in 2023, and according to Dr. Fong, problem gambling receives just a fraction of the resources versus comparable programs for drugs and alcohol. Because the funding that's available for gambling research and treatment compared to alcohol, tobacco, and substances is, is, is infinitesimal. It's tiny, barely registers. Bars. So we need to better this guy said, I, I self-excluded from a site. They told me I had to wait 24 hours to make sure I was sure. That's awesome. Uh, there's a guy up there who said like he used to work at a casino and they dealt with a lot of people who were self-excluded. That's interesting. Yeah. Oh, well. 24 hours. Are you addicted? Are you sure you're addicted, though? Yeah. Or are you just a bitch? In the 24 hours, you can also find out that, you know, you you could have hit big. Yeah, that's you true. You could hit it big in that 24 hours. I don't know, hours. man. Cause and then it would and it would solve all your problems. Yeah, it pay everything pretty much. Off. Yeah, better understand how do we keep people in that lane of social recreational gambling without harm. But looking at all of these legal problems, lawsuits, and Kevin Hart telling me to download an app he probably doesn't use, it just makes me wonder if this has all been worth it. Is the industry right when they argue that the legalized system we're creating is better than just the good old black market? I don't know. What does someone with a smarter voice think? There's some truth in it, right? Which is Yes, they shifted a large number of consumers from the black market where there are no protections at all into a regulated market where there are some protections. But for me, I think the main thing that's under um, understated in all of that is just the denominator. But if you just have more people exposed to gambling products, you're likely to get a large number of people who face the negative side effects of gambling, which is a small proportion. But if you have hundreds of millions of people using the product, it's large, right? I think it's disingenuous to say that you know, this is a safer environment for all these people because a lot of those people would, would not have been gambling, I imagine, on sports unless it was just shown to them all over and all these ads and everything. Saul Malik is a former gambling addict who now travels the country speaking about the risks of sports betting. I do think that the technology, of course, lame. Seems like he didn't win. Seems big. Like he gave up. Yeah. Quitter. This will accelerate it and also turn people who say they're sports bettors into casino players very quickly because the need for action speeds up as it progresses as an addiction. Well, the good news is now with all this growth, the sports betting industry is gonna, is gonna take a beat and clear their heads and, and really take some time to get this thing right before we escalate any further. There's actually even a further holy grail that they're still fighting for and that they, even at that early juncture back in the 2010s, it, were looking at as something that, they, that was the ultimate um, the ultimate goal. Oh no, what's that, Ken? And that is iGaming. It's essentially like full casino gambling on your phone, turn every phone into like, you know, a, a blackjack table or a slot machine or whatever that could operate 24 seven. Right now, iGaming is only legal in six states. And I'm sure for many of you, combining doom scrolling with doom slotting seems crazy. But also at one point, so was taking this sucker out, dialing up a heater of a parlay and throwing that shit on your Amex legally. But think of how far we've come with sports betting. I mean, look at the NFL. In 2003, the NFL wanted to distance themselves from the industry so much they rejected a proposal for Las Vegas to air a tourism ad during the Super Bowl. And now, the Eagles are doing paid partnership posts with DraftKings. In two days, the Super Bowl is going to be in Las Vegas. If all of this could happen in six years, who's to say what could happen in six more? 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, 60. I mean, it's hard to imagine, really. But if anything, it's important to recognize that we. America's number one sports book. FanDuel Casino. FanDuel. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm sorry. I'm DraftKings. 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 Playoffs, baby. The crown is yours. I'm trying to finish the. Oh, snap. DraftKings' new sports book app. For good work, I'm. There's no better feeling than a win, except the BetMGM win. For good work, I'm Dan Tewing. But that looks so cool. That looks so cool. It looks fun as hell. Yeah. I want to do that with Jamie Foxx. 
That's yeah. what I mean. It's like that's what it feels like when you when you put two hundred dollars down. Yeah, I lost two hundred dollars on DraftKings because I bet that Travis would propose to Taylor after the Chiefs win. Wait, no, you didn't. That's a real bet. Can people do that? I I doubt I, it. I mean, I, you might be able to. I don't fucking know. In a way, this stream has been the best uh, ad for FanDuel that we could have done together. Yeah, if I you mean, think about it. Well, that's because I'm secretly advertised by them. That's that's why you brought me on here. Yeah, whole thing, just for FanDuel. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much hey, for man. coming on. Thanks for having me, dude. This, this is was... great. Appreciate it. Did nice you, to meet everybody. Did you uh, Did you get a boost from uh, me watching your video at all, or no? Did you see anything oh, yeah. like a noticeable? Oh yeah, bump? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was it was huge. I mean, again, like we've only been doing this channel for for less than a year, so you watching it, people hearing about it, um, it's been crazy. We didn't even know that it would grow to be this big. So, uh, and we got a lot more episodes that we're looking to cover. So, uh, so no, man, I really appreciate that. But hell yeah, yes, yeah, it's been fun. Uh, here, before you go, one last thing I yeah. wanted to say is that uh, the re I asked you about the reaction thing. Um, I remember when we first talked. <laughs> yeah, and like a year ago, or how yeah, long was that? Well, it was. Uh, I said, big fan of your work, May 24th. Yeah. So last year, like almost an entire year ago. Mm -hmm. And um, we were going to talk about collabs and you were like, <laughs> and you told me that. Are you shit? <laughs> can I leak this? Oh my God. What? what I, I forget what we pitched. Oh you, yeah. We pitched a crazy idea. You were like. I feel like the chat wants to see it now. You okay? You, you you said we'd be coming from the perspective of a small YouTube channel that's desperate for followers, and we'd be like critiquing your live stream, your form, voice, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all in a joke to attempt. What's up, dude? Um, all in a joke to <laughs> attempt to steal your followers. We'd then upload it as is. Then, if you wanted to, you could do a follow-up reaction during your live stream to our video. Like, what the fuck are they just trying to steal my followers? Jesus, they're so desperate and so on. We could see where it goes from there, but it'd be funny to just have a small chain. Like reaction beef, <laughs> and the funniest thing is no like response, that. No response, by the way. Yeah, because no response. Because we got at, at ghosted. The time, because at the time I, I thought was I was getting, gonna get fire bombed. At the time I was getting cooked. Because like uh -oh. I have friends who do you know who H Bomber guy is? I don't. Yeah, I'm live. I, I have friends like uh, H Bomber guy and many others. Like we used to make jokes about like me reacting to YouTube content creators all the time. <laughs> And I knew that if you were to do that, I would get fucking uh, cooked. Oh, okay. Because people don't think that it's a, jo a joke. Like, yeah. People don't... Um, people get so mad. There's too many at, layers. On behalf of... People get really mad on behalf of like content creators in a very parasocial way. Even if the content creators themselves are like friends of mine yeah. who I'm reacting to. And they they literally would have used that as an opportunity at the because it was happening right as people were like sounds like it would have gotten us subscribers yeah <laughs> yeah you should have done it anyway sounds like it was a great idea should have done it you should have cooked my ass I would have <laughs> I would have gotten I there's gotten no the response ass after we sent the the longest yeah. it is it is five solid inches worth of a text and we got no response to it yeah I I literally said afterwards <laughs> I, like almost a year like in September yeah. I responded. <laughs> And I said, the React stuff always gets me blasted by the worst <laughs> losers. Ah, uh, that's great. <laughs> I'll do the other thing that you <laughs> suggested, but definitely not. Because we suggested another thing like a month later because we were like, oh, yeah. no, he hates us now. I know yeah. five inches is very long. Yeah, yeah you were, you were, there are like, uh, there are YouTube channels of people who I've never reacted to that have done like five hour videos <laughs> about how like I fucking am stealing content from uh small content creators yeah. and like half of it is just like my friends who yeah. <laughs> uh, are perfectly yeah happy with me watching See, this their is videos proof that stream. we're this is proof that we're friendly See, yes we we've we've done it but uh, wait what was it it was a gfci button like i told you a gfci button yeah so now the door works yeah it was just because it was raining and it was wet what wait I, I don't understand the outdoor water heater uh-huh So for wet environments, for when you touch it, you don't die. Okay, so but what what is, why would that shut off the the gate and also? It's all on the same circuit. So GFCI is meant to protect you from like humidity, oh. so you don't drown okay. yourself. Okay. So you just have to press the button. That's it's it. a mini breaker. Got it. Okay. Well, there it is. I guess. Nothing to do with me. Sorry, I didn't have a. I, I did not have a. a 
water heater. Remember I was telling you it was like yeah. broken? Yeah, that was when do wipes came into the picture. Yeah, yo, this guy's funny. He's naturally quick with it. Look at that, dude. Funny. They're gassing your shit up. He goes, funny. This guy yeah. is funny. Yeah. Well, anyway, man. If you uh, want to see how wanna... funny he actually is, and if you're ha if you happen to be in Los Angeles, Hollywood Improv tomorrow night, folks. The mm -hmm. the coveted nine thirty, I think, slot on a Wednesday. There so you go. We're we're gonna get down, but uh, yeah, man, cool. Well, thanks mm -hmm. for having me, dude. Thanks I appreciate it. Number, yeah, this is a lot of fun. I don't wanna. Right. This is this was. I can't. I'm, I don't think I'll be able to blink for like three days after looking at this <laughs> I, stream. Of, that's you, crazy. <laughs> everyone, everyone says that. Yeah. it's it is pretty insane. That's nuts. All right, All man. Right. I'll get out of here. But right. uh, thanks, dude. Thank you for coming on, brother. Of course.